Hey everyone, it is a special edition of Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out. I was interviewed about holiday decluttering and organization and starting right for the new year. So I thought that I'd create a bonus episode. Does your clutter own you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. I was interviewed by Mia Johnson on the show right now, which is on Alternative Thursdays, 1130 to noon Pacific Standard Time at kwmr.org. So that's kwmr.org, which is West Marin Community Radio. I'm a huge fan of independent podcasters like myself and independent station. So check them out again. That's kwmr.org. Good morning. You are listening to right now, a short and sweet morning show coming to you every other Thursday morning from 1130 to noon. I'm your host, Mia Johnson. And today my guest is Julie Caraccio. And Julie is a professional organizer, author, speaker, and certified life coach whose focus is recognizing and clearing clutter in folks' lives, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Lots of clutter around the holidays. And um, you contacted me about this because I was curious about how to maximize the holidays for folks. Um, so thanks so much for joining Julie Caraccio. Welcome to KWMR. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Absolutely. This is my first on Zoom on video interview at home. So I'm just, it's so nice to see your face, your smiling face. So where are we reaching you today, Julie? In Wheeling, West Virginia. West Virginia. And what's the weather like there? It is unseasonably warm at 55. We've already had snow a few times. Uh, we recently, this is my hometown where I grew up and we recently moved back from North Carolina. So I'm thrilled to see the snow. Not everyone else is, but I am. Nice. We're, we're unseasonably warm here too, <laughs> but probably a different season. <laughs> um, so you are a professional um, in addressing clutter of all types. How would you describe your work in just a sentence? I support people in clearing clutter in all areas of their, of their lives so they can create the life that they desire and share their gifts with the world. And what led you to this? Well, when I first started my business, I was really focused on organization and I called my business Healing Through Organization. And meanwhile, I was interviewing people, doing a show. And then I had this client who said, hey, can we just talk? And I was like, it's okay, it's you know your dime. And what I realized after that session was it was more important to clear the clutter because technically you can organize clutter, but it mm -hmm. was more important to clear it and then worry about the organization later. Absolutely. And it seems like there's a lot of different fields of thinking about that. And I'd love to get into that later, but I'm curious. I feel like everyone has different messages about clutter, about cleanliness, about organizing from an early age, do you remember any messages when you were young about how to keep your stuff and how to organize it? No, I was an uptight kid. And so my parents were a little bit disorganized and it really bothered me being late for anything. And so that's because my mom was disorganized, couldn't find the car keys, you know, whatever, whatever, got the schedule. And so then that made me organized. I'm like, I don't want to be late. I don't want to be late for practice. I don't want to get in trouble. So that's really where it started for me. Do you have the organized pencil case? I do not. <laughs> I do not. Um, so you um, are a life coach, professional organizer, speaker, and author. Um, can you talk a little bit about the life coaching aspect? Sure. So again, that kind of came with that client. And I found that, that I talked about a moment ago, and I found that working with people, coaching automatically came up because I wanted to get what's underneath the clutter. You know, what's it really about? And for most of the people I work with, there's some kind of connection to it. So what, because I want to people clear the clutter, then move forward. I don't want it to come back a year or two. And if we get to the root cause, then we can release it and move forward. So you work with different forms of clutter. What would you say are the major factors that contribute to physical clutter? Uh, fear of needing something someday. That is really huge for people. 
uh, scarcity, believing that they won't have abundance come back. And if they let it go, will something be there to fill the place? Filling a void of something that's not physical and it's trying to meet a need. So I'd say off the top of my head, those three. Absolutely. And people hear a lot about hoarders, which is not what you're talking about. You're talking about um, the everyday clutter, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the everyday clutter, which most of us have. Absolutely. And have you had um, clients where you said, you know what, this is something bigger. <laughs> this is this is a bigger problem. I had that happen only once because what I typically do is a 15 minute consultation to kind of get an idea. And I trust my instincts. Very important to me to trust my intuition. And so one person only it's happened once lied to me over the phone. And the first thing out of her mouth is I'm not a hoarder because on the website, it says if you have 18 inches from the wall and I only have 17. So, you know, what are you going to do? So the good news was we had a session. I found she had needed something desperately and we found it. And I said, you know, you need someone with a little more experience and who focuses on that. So pretty bad, pretty good batting average. So what's the sequence when you talk to someone about physical clutter, what's next? And then if we talk about physical clutter, then I have them fill out an assessment because I like to ask some questions and see what their responses are. Cause usually that's going to tell me a lot. And then I can hit the round, ground running, have a plan, and then we meet and then go forward from there. And what's the most fun part of the process for you uh, in terms of physical clutter work? Seeing relief on clients' faces, seeing their aha moments is even greater when they make that connection. I'll share a really quick story. I had someone who had this giant stack of papers. I'm like, well, what's up with this? And she said, oh, those are clippings that I'm sending to people, you know, recipes or sauna magazine. And so as we talked, I said, okay, let's dig a little bit deeper on this. And she made the connection. If I don't send these clippings and keep in touch with people, they aren't going to love me. As soon as she voiced that, she knew that was false, pitched it into the recycling bin. But she came, you know, people have the wisdom within. I see my job is pulling that out and helping them find their own wisdom. And you've talked about decluttering first and then getting organized. Can you talk about the importance of the sequence? Well, I believe that it's important to, to declutter. Because if you get organized and solve the stuff, you still have clutter, in my view. I mean, if you have a bunch of stuff and are overwhelmed, you know, think for a moment if you're in a space that's super cluttered and then one that isn't. You know, you can literally feel that difference. So even if it's organized and a bunch of stuff, and let's not forget, you have to maintain that. You have to keep that up. That takes time, money, and effort. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to simplify my life and have less to do. I'm talking to Julie Caraccio um, about clutter. And um, what about the holidays? Can you talk about what happens in people's lives around the holidays and how to avoid some of the pitfalls when it comes to clutter? Sure. So I think one of the biggest things that I would say is that people become overwhelmed during the holidays. You know, we have this manufactured, oh, the holidays are this lovely, great time. And that's not true for everyone. And so what I think is really important at the beginning of the holidays, what matters most to you? Do a little planning. What do you love about this time of the season? What have you done that you hate, that you've done out of obligation? What is it that you'd like to try? So that kind of sets the stage. We focus on what we really want, what we really like to check out and what we don't want to do. And for me, everything kind of flows from there because you know we can really easily create holiday clutter if we have a lot of stuff. We, I know people who have 5,000 different places to hide their gifts and then forget it and where did I put it and then discover that they already brought it, you know, and that's spending time and money. If you get really emotional around the holidays and don't have a plan, like I know I, when I get upset, I eat emotionally. So I have to be really aware and pay attention for things like that. So I think it really starts with the planning. And that is the first step that you can do. That's going to support you to have happy holidays. And in terms of planning, are you a paper list type of a person? Is it more of a brainstorm? What do you encourage folks to do that really you find is the most effective? It really is going to depend on them individually. I'm old school. 
I like to write it down. I get a thrill to cross off everything off my list. I like to plan. I have a big old planner here. But you know, people who are more technology savvy might want to use some apps to get organized. They're great apps like to organize your gift giving or your budget or whatever. I'm less of a fan of hybrid because if we've got a paper planner and I've got something on the computer and I've got an app, then things tend to fall through the cracks and you lose something. Then you have to organize your organizational exactly. elements. And then it starts exactly. to be a big old vortex. <laughs> yes, and something um, gets lost or sucked in. How do you deal with the concept that, um, not talking for personal experience, except actually I am, uh, people who like to organize and it becomes all they're doing and they're not doing the work, if that makes sense. Or they're so not, you, yeah, like they're like focused on the organizing, but they're not uh, actually utilizing the things that they're organizing. Like, how can you make it really, really practical, like focusing on the practical? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I, I think that's is just as unhealthy. If you're spending all your time organizing and then you're not living life, we're here to live life, to have joy and do all that. And so that's where you kind of have to relax your standards a little bit. You know, I always think of that funny when everybody loves Raymond and the mom has the couch covered in plastic. And then she's like, you know, I'm flexible. I can take off the plastic. And the guys are like, oh my gosh, we're actually sitting on the couch. Is this okay? And so, you know, I don't want to be that uptight about everything. And so do it. So it works enough. Can you find what you need when you need it? When you walk into your house, can you feel peace? Because if everything's super organized, I wouldn't feel I don't have labels for everything. Not everything's color coordinated. And that's not a slam against people who are. But again, that goes back to maintaining everything. Can you find what you need? Do you have peace? Those are the things to concentrate on. And you know what? Good enough is good enough. It's not about perfection. And one of the things that frustrates me is I see these shows and it's like, hey, if you are a big Hollywood person and have a million dollar budget, have at it. But that's not realistic for most of us. So talking about other folks who do organization or have techniques, do you have any inspiration? Do you have any fields that you really like, a book that really helped you um, find your niche? Uh, I really like feng shui and I let really like, you know, I don't own a lot of shoes. I spend money on personal growth. So that's really where I've taken a lot of my stuff. I haven't read any of Marie Kondo's stuff, but I saw an interview with her and she talked about gratitude. I'm like, you're speaking my language and she had great energy. So she's someone from, but again, you know, I know a lot of people who couldn't do that method. I can't, I was like, well, I was thinking today, I have this awesome coat hanger, you know, a coat tree to put all my coats. Do I love it? Yeah, I don't know. Does it bring me joy? Yeah, I don't know if I'd say that, but boy, do I use it. So you have to find what works best for you. And a mistake that people will make is, oh, everyone's doing Marie Kondo. I have to jump on and do that. Mm, well, it works for some people, but not everyone. So you have to find what works for you. How do you deal with really, really sentimental clients? Excellent question, because sentimental clutter can be really hard for people to release. First of all, you have to meet people where they are. You know, my mom died a couple months ago and she, after a long illness and my dad's like, let's go through everything. I'm like, slow your roll, big J. You know, I need some time to deal with this. So first, especially if it's something like that, you need to get to a place when you're ready. I always remind people that the, our memories are in our hearts and our head. You know, that can never be taken away from us. The challenge is that people will put that memory onto the object. Well, I can't let that table go because it was in my grandmother's house. My grandmother's in my heart. She's in my head. Same with my mom. They haven't gone anywhere. So that's the first thing that I really try to emphasize. And then curate a collection instead of keeping everything. You know, can you do a cool shadow box? My mom was a painter. And so she painted a holiday card every year. And so I'm going to get those all together. I've got them all gathered and I need to take them down and get them framed. So that's a way that I'm like, oh, every time I look at that, you know, instead of in the file where they currently reside. And so can you curate a collection from something? And if you get in the habit of understanding they are not in the object, they are here in my head and heart, then that makes it a lot easier. How did you see the last um, almost two years of the pandemic uh, affect your clients, um, affect your work, affect people's attitudes and affect people's homes? You know, it's really interesting because a crisis really tells us who we are and shows us who we are and comes out. I was very strict. I stopped in person. 
I do virtual organizing and, but I just was like, I'm not going to take a chance because for me, what if I had it and infected anyone, I, I couldn't have done that. And so a lot of people really were like, oh, wow, I have time on my hands. And I don't have that hour commute each way every day. I lived in Los Angeles. I get that. So some people really stepped up and said, hey, I want to do this. Other people kind of retreated into their shell and kind of it magnified being overwhelmed. Whereas other people like, ah, I can do this. I've got the time. Other people, it just made them freeze even more. Our affirmations for decluttering support you in releasing clutter at a deeper level. The meditation begins with focused statements on releasing clutter, followed by powerful positive affirmations for healing and end with completion statements. The affirmation concludes with a reaffirming meditation exercise to fill where clutter was released. Nine clearing clutter affirmations to choose from. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn more. And I think another thing about the pandemic was the cardboard boxes. Amazon, <laughs> I had never ordered from Amazon before the pandemic. I ordered so much stuff from Amazon. What's your stance on cardboard boxes? I feel like that's something that just piles up in your house and you think, okay, I'm going to use this. I'm going to organize with this. I'm going to make a project out of this. What's your stance on those pesky cardboard boxes? That's a great question because we are, uh, most of us do order from Amazon. So one, I always try to get a use before recycle, like reuse it. And so can I give it like, we just move. So I posted, Hey, moving boxes, come and come and get them. And so that someone else was moving that could get a use. Now they know on Amazon, they have started the option of get it in fewer boxes. So you can now choose that when you're ordering. I know that there are some companies that now that they, and I apologize, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but that you can order in a reusable box. So there are people out there trying to come up with the solution, but you know, it's a big deal because that, and I don't know if I'm guess I don't know if Amazon uses recyclable recycled cardboard but that i mean it's a ton of cardboard and you know i think for many of us the pandemic made us realize wow well, wait like look at the smog you could see in la for the first time in nature and seeing in other places we were saying ho ho let's reset the button here and you know so amazon needs to be less wasteful in my view talking to julie caraccio she is a, an organizational and clutter expert <laughs> um can you talk about any other environmental focus that you have in your work and uh, any tips and tricks for folks that might be wanting to declutter in a environmentally conscious way? Sure. I love to do sustainable organizing and I'm very passionate about it. So one of the things is, well, let's just take the cardboard boxes, for example, you know, I did a little thing, drink wine and get organized. So if you go to the wine store, you know, those are great. If they hold those bottles of wine, like I have some to organize Christmas ornaments. We celebrate Christmas. I can color coordinate them because it's different wine boxes. Now they're stored in the house. So I don't want to store cardboard like in the basement or the garage where it, with the elements. I'm a huge fan of repurposing things. A lot of times you have things around your home that you can repurpose instead of going to the container store to buy something. So you can always look to repurpose. Get in the habit of rethinking everything. You know, now that we're kind of coming out of COVID, when you'd go to those, oh, let's go to the big conference and all that junk, they'd give you the little tote, which, hey, we're using a tote, but all those tchotchke things to dust, junk that breaks after five seconds, start to say no to that. Say no, thank you. And then say to people, hey, you know, I really like your booth, but could you, you know, have a pencil that I'd use? Or could you have a pen made with recyclable material or whatever, or something that is less on the environment? Or you know what? I'd really not like anything, but maybe you can give me 10 tips from your area of expertise. So starting to rethink repurpose is something that a lot of people can do and recycle, be aware of the recycling laws in your town. You'd be amazed at how many people, now you're in a, I think in an area where people are probably pretty good about it. I unfortunately am not. And that's one of my things. I'm like, I'm ready to get this town to recycle more. So that's on my to-do list. Uh, you're listening to right now. I'm your host, Mia Johnson, talking to Julie Caraccio and emotional, spiritual, mental clutter. Can you touch on those? Sure. So mental clutter, think about it. Monkey mind, anxious. How many, I mean, COVID's a great example. How many of us were anxious 
or waking up at night worried. So that's what I'm talking about mental clutter. When you have a bunch of physical clutter, it affects your mind. You can't have mental clarity. So what I like to say a lot is the inner affects the outer. So as you clear your physical space, that's going to help clear your mental mind. Emotional clutter is things like jealousy. It is, you know, how much time, or if you, someone that has a knee jerk reaction and get angry all the time, that's clutter because that's preventing you from living your best life. And then spiritual clutter is things like not being able to forgive because that harms you instead of the person you're angry with and not having gratitude is another big one for me. So those are just a couple of examples. And what's your next step once you talk to someone about that? What are some practical things that you encourage clients to do to maintain uh, mental, emotional, or spiritual cleanliness, <laughs> or I guess not, not the right word, but uh, clarity or, or freedom. Freedom's a great word. Well, obviously it's going to depend on the individual person, but so for instance, your homework assignment might be say no to three people this week or say no to something that you don't want to do you know, this is great. We're talking about the holidays now. Say no to that office party you don't want to go to, or, you know, say no to great Aunt Maple's Christmas crunch pie that you always hate, but always get to make her happy. So that would be some examples or uh, for emotional clutter. If you get angry that your mom says, hey, have you found a boyfriend yet? How can you turn it around and have a different perspective and think, wow, my mom really loves me. And so that's why she's asking if I'm in a relationship, right? And control your anger and how you view things. Huge fan of having gratitude. You know, we have so much in our lives and so many times we forget that. So doing a daily gratitude practice. And I like to say, do it when you're in the shower or do it right when you wake up or right before you go to bed. If you pair it with something like, oh, I'm in the shower, I'm gonna say three things. Or if I'm stuck in traffic, I'm gonna say three things I'm grateful for. You get into the habit of doing that you tend to do it more. And what about physical clutter in terms of follow through once you stop working with folks? Do you find there's techniques that really maintain the good habits? Great question. Well, one thing that I do is I have their plan, like a clutter control plan. So once I get to know someone, I'm like, oh, you know, a term I like to use is clutter kryptonite. What makes you weak in the knees? For me, a oh, leopard print, leopard print, I got to have it. So I'm aware of it, right? So then I said, okay, you know, take a deep breath. You already, you know, have a pair of leopard print shoes. You're in good shape. So we'll talk about their clutter kryptonite and then come up with a specific plan. So for people in general, I would say clutter, declutter, like at the end of the week, tidy up your space. I go through everything I own every year and encourage my clients to do so. And once you've done a major purge, it will take you no time at all to go through each room and say, oh. I don't need that. And then ask yourself, you know, do you need it? Do you use it? Do you love it? Can you find the information? If books are a big thing for people. That's one of my challenge areas. And so I've said, okay, you get one bookcase, make it work. And so, you know, can I, if it's been sitting there for a while, can someone else get better use out of it? And do you find it's a lot easier when you're there with them in person or um, have, has it been just as effective virtually? It really depends on the person because like we're talking now, if I were to have you move your camera around and your space looks great, by the way, you know, then I could see, okay, this, that, let me ask you some questions. That's where we're getting stuck. Absolutely. And how do you um, deal with people who are overzealous in their goals, um, especially like around the new year. I feel like people are, I'm going to change everything in my life. Everything's going to be perfect. Um, how do you, again, keep it practical? Great question. I always encourage people not to concentrate on more than three items because we just can't. And then because a lot of times what happens, we're all excited in the new year and by February it's faded. And what I, when I was younger, I used to write, I would make this pretty poster board with all these things I was going to change and all these things I could do. And I'm like, rah, rah, you know, in a couple of weeks that it ended. So that's when I was like, okay, just concentrate on a couple of things. And then, you know, life happened. My mother was ill and I've always said family was my priority. I put my money where my mouth was. Okay. So business is going to just have to lessen, do some virtual stuff. You know, COVID said, made me say, oh, let's publish some books, you know, like let's be flexible and what else can we do? And so sometimes, you know, life happens and you just have to go with the flow. But then, you know, I, if someone's like super 
uh, strict about it or if it's a perfectionism, then we're going to have some conversations around that. What's really being perfect about? What are we trying to control here? So that's what I mean by digging a little deeper. And where can people find your resources, your website, um, your services, all that good stuff? At reawakenyourbrilliance.com. And it sounds like you're doing virtual things. So if someone out in West Marin is interested in that, they can check it out. Um, and finally, in our last few minutes, wanted to ask you both what's most challenging about your work and also what you find most fulfilling about your work. I'll do the easy one first. What I find most fulfilling is being a support and seeing people have those aha moments, seeing them reawaken their brilliance, seeing them share their gifts with the world, seeing them get more confident. You know, when people bloom and then they see, oh my gosh, all this clutter has been weighing me down and I had no idea, no idea. I'd say probably the most challenging thing for me would be when people are resistant to change. But one thing I've personally done is I believe in setting intentions. And so what has happened is I have people who are ready to do the work and it, there's no judgment. If someone isn't, it's just, Oh, you know, I, you can do it. I believe in you. And when, when someone stops cold, that's, I think that just it makes me sad because you're awesome and you have these gifts. Let's get going. And if somebody was to look around their house today or their life or their mind or their heart, um, what's a good place for someone to start if they are ready for change? They are ready for change. So I would say, ask yourself, is there something driving you nuts? Like you can't sleep because your bed's full of clutter or do you have a deadline for something? So you're going to have the, the garage cabinets put in in January. Well, we might want to get the the garage decluttered or you know if you're not paying your bills on time get in that office wherever you're paying your bills and get that decluttered and organized so ask yourself a couple things and that's where you can start i would say for mental have some kind of mindfulness practice you know that can be anything for some people it's mowing the lawn is meditative for spiritual have a gratitude practice start working on forgiveness because a lot of us have resentment and then i'd say emotionally just be aware you know where do you have always have the same reaction? Are you always getting sad? Are you always getting angry? And start to do some digging on that. Right. And anything else that you're excited about um, in your work going into 2022? Yes, I am starting a group coaching on Patreon. I've redone that, which I'm super excited. I'm making it affordable. I'm doing with a California organizer, keeping it real classes for those of us who have lives, but know that organizing and decluttering would help. Uh, my 15th book is coming out, which is a 21 day challenge for if you're really overwhelmed, baby steps to declutter your life. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, we've been talking to Julie Caraccio and that website again, if people want to check it out. Reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Right. You've been listening to right now. I'm your host, Mia Johnson, and I would love to visit West Virginia someday. I've never been there. So thank you so much for making the time this morning to, to join us and give us some tips going into the holiday and into the new year. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it, Julie. Keep subscribed because you never know when I'm going to pop on and have bonus episodes or interview people or do special episodes. Clear your clutter inside and out. It's still going to keep on rolling. Wishing you all a wonderful holiday season, no matter what you celebrate, and may you experience the magic. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.